Hello, and thank you for tuning in to this e-learning webinar, The Impact of Culture in Fighting Fraud, created as part of International Charity for the Awareness Week. The, the week brings together everyone involved in the charity and not-for-profit sectors to raise awareness and share good practice in tackling fraud and financial crime. We encourage you to share this video and any of our other resources with your colleagues. I will now look at how an organization's culture can impact the propensity of an employee to commit fraud or affect the effectiveness of fraud-fighting measures. Let us start with the definition of culture. What is culture? The term culture can have several nuances, but for the purpose of this webinar, I will take a simple explanation to mean the personality of an organization and its shared beliefs, values, behaviors, the way things are done, and the explicit and implicit rules. An organizational culture can therefore be intentionally driven or develop unintentionally. An organization with an ethical culture is one that promotes ethical behavior through various ways. To assess how culture may impact fraud, let us look at the reasons why people commit fraud. Two theories that explain why people commit fraud have been widely used, and that is the fraud triangle and the fraud diamond. Proponents of the fraud triangle theory state that for fraud to occur, one must have perceived opportunities, pressures, and rationalization. Opportunities are control loopholes that could be exploited to commit fraud. Pressures or incentives are the internal or external factors that push someone to commit an act of fraud. Rationalization is the justification of the action by the perpetrator. Proponents of the fraud diamond theory state that one must also have the right capability to commit an act of fraud. Without capability, they would not be able to do so. Any fraud risk management policy, strategy, guideline, or protocols must therefore aim to close up available opportunities, reduce the pressures, eliminate rationalization, and where possible, reduce the chances of exploiting capabilities. One must therefore understand how these factors interplay in the organization in order to create an effective approach to combat fraud and corruption. When people join any organization, they will naturally want to fit in. They will want to feel part of it and contribute positively to its missions and objectives. And these positive aspirations are easily influenced by the organizational culture. The culture, therefore, creates an incentive structure to behave in a particular way. Culture is like a bedrock for the success or failure of any effort to combat fraud. A positive culture will make it easy for fraud risk management initiatives to thrive. For example, a culture where employees feel safe to report an ethical acts done by anyone, including senior management, will go a long way to reduce rationalization, enable early detection of corrupt activities, thereby curtailing fraud losses. A culture with the right tone at the top that supports the establishment of effective controls and does not support senior management overriding those controls will greatly limit opportunities to commit fraud and reduce rationalization. A culture that fosters open communication where the well-being of the employees are looked upon will reduce pressures and motivations. A culture that does not tolerate unethical behavior will give sanctions, thereby deterring the behavior. On the contrary, an organization with a culture where controls are generally disregarded are not monitored, where responsibilities are unclear, where performance is not effectively evaluated, where promotions 
and accolades are given based on relationships as opposed to merit, where there's little investment in training, a culture characterized by fear of reporting wrongdoing, or where reports are not acted upon is negative. Employees working in such an environment tend to lose ownership or feel less cared for. As a result, they might build up undue pressures, increase rationalization, or create opportunities for fraud to occur. Implementing fraud risk management initiatives in such an environment will be difficult as the initiatives would lack buy-in and genuineness. So who is responsible for creating a positive culture? Everyone. All employees in the organization have a shared responsibility to create an ethical and positive culture which will discourage fraud and corruption. Management, however, and leadership have an added responsibility. This is because they have decision-making power over resources and technically the capability of creating an environment that fosters ethical behavior. One researcher or author put it this way, that if top management does not uphold and prioritize high ethical standards, employees are likely to commit fraud. Employees closely watch the behavior of the leaders and that informs their behaviors as well. The trustees are not exempt. They likewise have a responsibility similar to the managers as they provide oversight over the charity's operations. Trustees should therefore ensure that they have the right information needed for decision making. They should attend relevant training to ensure that they have basic understanding on technical areas so that they can adequately assess the information presented to them. Lastly, how can you create the right culture that discourages fraud? The first thing is to get the basics right. Ensure you have appropriate governance oversight over fraud and corruption issues. Have a policy which quickly communicates your stance, procedures that explicitly lays out expectations from every employee and stakeholders. Have a reporting mechanism that allows for confidential or anonymous reports. And when reports are made, deal with them promptly. Have a training program targeted at communicating the right culture and behavior that is upheld by your charity. Legitimacy is also very important. Management behavior tends to inform the behavior of employees more than the written policies. So management teams should ensure that they hold themselves to higher ethical standards. They comply and follow the policies and procedures that they reward ethical behavior and sanction an ethical act that encourage reporting, and when matters are reported, that they're acted upon effectively. It's about being genuine and walking the talk. Lastly, it's important to be deliberate, be intentional and proactive. Communicate regularly what sort of behavior is, treated, is tolerated in your charity. Remember, a negative culture can sit in unintentionally, either from the top or the middle or from the bottom. It's, it is therefore important to communicate your mission, your vision, your values, and what you uphold from time to time. You can also be deliberate about monitoring. For example, conduct anonymous surveys to find out more about the drivers of culture in your charity and be sure to act on the outcome if negative. Thank you for listening. Please remember to check out the other free resources created as part of the week which are available on our online hub. Together, we can keep charity fraud out.